are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Well, hello, booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with the Friday Reads. It was weird doing a Saturday Reads, and now I had to kind of compress. I lost a day of my seven days of reading, but I managed to fit everything in that I wanted to, and uh, here I am. That first vaccination shot, the Pfizer, uh, by the way, I am, there is nobody on the planet more pro-vax than me. Anti-vaxxers are the scum of the earth. If you are an anti-vaxxer, please unsubscribe, okay? But boy, it did knock me for a loop, <laughs> so, <laughs> What few brain cells I'm usually operating on were denied to me for about four days, so I, those, those three brain cells are back, so let's get going. I've only had a couple videos up since my Saturday reads. Here they are, here's a little bit of a highlights reel right here. I don't hate that cover. It's, it's not the best cover I've ever seen, but it's not, terrible and here's a picture of him he's not very hard on the eyes either and the protagonist he had a here, very good job as a lieutenant and he lo he lost that job because he got involved with other people who you know who, who lied to him about something that you're going to find out in the book so he got he lost that that job and it was a very very big loss for him um this has been kind of a crappy reading week in terms of what i have to tell you about so a little bit negative i'm not going to um dwell on it the only book that i feel like ranting about is so obscure that none of you care so i'm gonna, not going to accentuate the negative as much as i could um and i have some good things to talk about too so i'm quite shocked that i have Decided to bail on this collected stories of Eudora Welty. I hated these stories so much. There's about two at the beginning that are pretty good. And Jesus, I, Brian and I have been buddy reading this. Brian of Bookish and I have been buddy reading this since, I think, January. We, we did half of it. What suckers for punishment we are. So the theme of today's Friday Reads is... Sean, the book maniac, has identified... The one problem he has in his reading life, he does not bail enough. Should have bailed on this months ago. Kept waiting for it to get better. Kept thinking, well, maybe she just was going through a slump. But these Tarrant stories, they either gave me a headache because they were so dense, with, constipated with stupid images upon images and mythic resonance. You had to know the Greek myths, which is the definition of shitty fiction. If you have to know an obscure Greek myth to understand the story, the story is crap. Whew, I didn't think I was going to get quite so exercised. There was some lots of racism in here. She was probably less racist than most of her contemporaries, but you know, this book is um, saturated with the n-word. And just boring stories weird stuff about sexuality but mostly just i never could get what the point was there was nothing here that gave me any joy other than one or two near why i live at the post office and maybe one or two others that she's famous for she shouldn't have written short stories she was terrible at it and i am an expert because i've read 20 more than 25 of her short stories i would rather stick pins in my eyes than read another so that happened <laughs> I have finished four. I finished one of the ones that I started last week, the, the novella, Turbulence, by David Soleil. This was good. I give it four stars. I wanted more, but it was a really interesting way to link up a bunch of disparate stories. Each story was about an airplane trip, and so the titles were, you know, the airplane codes from one city to the other. And one of the characters that made either a, whether it was a large role or a small role in one story, ended up being the protagonist of the second story, and it would just go around the world like that. And I thought it was really good. He's a great writer. I think this could have been double double the length or structured differently to, to make an actual novel rather than linking up the short stories this way. But it did feel more, more of a novella. I could see the point of it. And I, what I really liked was that it started out with pampered upper class people. And as the stories progressed, the people became less and less privileged, underprivileged. And the lives chronicled. It really gave you kind of a, a sense of class divides and racial divides. 
it's worth your time. It's not perfect. Um, I probably won't remember it for very long, but I really enjoyed reading it. It's one of the first books I've read in one week. Have I ever read a book in one week since I started my channel? I'm not sure, but I did read this one. And I finished uh, Sanjeev Sahotis, Booker Long Listed Novel, China Room, and I was disappointed. I didn't hate it. I know there's some booktubers that hate it. I, I know there's some booktubers and other social media friends of mine that absolutely loved it. It is a Marmite book for sure, and I come down right in the middle. I was disappointed by it, but I was uh, thoroughly engaged from the beginning to the end, and there were parts of it that really worked. It has a really strong opening. And I mean, everybody's talking about it. I will say that I'm not particularly enjoying reading the book or long list because I don't. I hate reading the same books that other people are reading, and reviews are coming up, and good ratings are popping up on my screen. I really don't like that, so I don't think I'd ever do a prize list again. I, d I don't like it. It just makes me uncomfortable. There's two storylines. The famous one is back in 1929 in Punjab, and a 16-year-old girl. She, I think, she was even 15 when she gets married. Three teenage girls are married to three brothers, and they don't even know which one they're marrying. And that's the Shakespeare bed plot that is the plot of that. And that was really interesting. I don't know that it was believable. The mother of the brothers who was orchestrating it seemed like a caricature of a character that never really cohered for me, so that detracted from that story's power. But... It's, it's quite autobiographical, the story. I don't know how much the 1929 story is, but Sunjeev Sahoda, there's a picture of him being held by his great-grandmother as a baby. And it's his great-grandmother that was the 16-year-old. And she... So Shakespearean bad plot antics that do interrogate... I hate that word, I keep, but it keeps coming up in my... <laughs> videos, uh, the gender, the misogyny, all the stuff going on in India at the time, and it was a page-turner. The great-grandmother, who I just showed you the picture of, that character, Mehar, I thought her character was really well portrayed, and she was maybe the only character that really came alive for me, although the, the man, the brother she was in love with, I'm not going to say any more than that, he, he was a pretty vivid character too, but... And the more modern is maybe the Sanjeev Sahota character in f more modern times. A, a British Muslim man, drug addict, goes back to his ancestral homestead, which is the farm where all this stuff happened in 1929, to do with his great-grandmother, to kind of dry out or to uh, go cold turkey off drugs. And... There's a whole plot line with him, and I didn't find that nearly as engaging. It just didn't come alive for me. So th that was another part of it that was disappointing for me. But it's worth reading. It is not worthy of the Booker Prize. It is not Sunjeev Sahota's best work. It's not as terrible as his debut novel. But he, if you read one Sunjeev Sahota novel, don't let it be this. It must be uh, his uh, 2015 novel, The Year of the Runaways, which is a masterpiece. And I have also finished... No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood, and I'm going to talk about it. I gave it three stars because it's not a novel. It has no business being on any novel prize list. I am a genre policer, and this fails as a novel. It is not by any stretch of the imagination a novel. Ugh. But I don't know what you call it. An essay? Auto? Maybe? Auto? No, there's not enough fiction. There's not enough fictionalizing of any kind. It's essayistic, and as S as kind of essays, it's far better than a lot of crap I've read that's kind of a structured this way. The writing is amazing. It really is. I was entertained by it. So it's a, it's a Twitter addict, and I mean, I can relate to that, not so much with Twitter, but if you look at how, how addicting and how central social media is to really anybody's life that's alive with that has any device. I mean, we can admit it or not, but we're all addicted. And uh, it explores that with humor and with seriousness, uh, with a playful intellectuality that, I mean, it was really, parts of it were quite delightful. A lot of it was really funny. And then the protagonist gets involved in a family crisis, family tragedy, that makes her get serious, and that part didn't really work for me. I mean, I don't know if it's true for her life. I, I just didn't really 
the tonal shift for some readers that loved it was the whole point for me it just didn't work uh, I I th I liked things about it I'm glad I read it I'll be disappointed if it wins it'll probably be on the short list because the writing is so strong it's not a novel Okay, this is the one that I ended up hating, that was the bitterest disappointed disappointment. This is the one that I could rant about with ten times the venom that I did about Eudora Welty, but nobody out there has ever heard of her. Nobody's ever commented on any of my references to her previously, so I'm not going to take up your valuable time to rant about it here. The Traveling Horn Player by Barbara Trapedo. This is a British novel from the, when was it, the 80s? Uh, 1998. And I loved the first chapter. I loved the protagonist, and I talked about it. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a minute on this because you guys don't care really, and I'm, I'm not complaining that you don't care. I understand that you don't care, so I'm just not gonna waste my time or yours. There was an emotional power to the opening scenario, but then as she followed a bunch of characters around, the tone just got madcap, and the plot, while there was. As part of me that was awestruck by her attempt to make such a intricately plotted story. The fact that I didn't care about any of the other characters and I could never figure out whether I was meant to care, whereas I cared so deeply about the people I met in the first chapter and then all the different connections, it just, the, the web just got larger and larger and the tone got satirical, uh, comedic, mocking. And I started to hate it. I really hated it by the end. That's enough. One star. I will never read another Barbara Trapedo. But there was a ghost in the first chapter that did not... <laughs> That's not what ruined the novel for me. So it kind of cured me maybe of my ghost allergy. But uh, it gave me a whole bunch of new allergies. That's what I finished. So I, I didn't hate the two Booker books, but I didn't love them. I didn't really think they were... They weren't Sean books. A lot of people love them, so enough said about that. That's my final comments. I'm not going to be doing anything else with those books. I've started two. So I have started another Booker nominee, Mary Lawson's A Town Called Solace. And this is a Marmite book. And so far, I'm quite liking it, actually. Um, what is particularly... It's set in northern Ontario, and I think it's set back in the maybe... I don't pay attention to... Is it the 70s or the 80s? 1970s, yep. 1972, and it's in a little rinky-dink little town, which I can relate to, not northern Ontario, but I grew up in a rinky-dink, near a rinky-dink little town in Saskatchewan in the 70s. The little girl, I think she's about 10, her 16-year-old sister has run away and has been missing for 10 days, and the police have been called, and the police don't really care, and the, there's family dysfunction, and she, I find that her perspective on all this is really well done. Uh, child narrators are either terrible, I mean it doesn't work for me at all, or it really works this one so far. I've read 50 pages. It's really working for me. I'm quite besotted by the narration. Um, then the old lady next door that she, this little girl is cat sitting. <laughs> she dies because she while well, she's in hospital and she dies and then she has left the house and all her money to because she and her husband who's dead never had any kids but they loved another little neighbor boy that used to live in the town maybe in the same house as the little girl does now i'm, I'm not sure but anyway uh, for a short time they kind of were almost like surrogate parents and then that family of, with the little boy moved away. So decades later, the old lady contacts the now grown boy who barely remembers her but has fond memories that he can hardly remember, just an emotional feeling of how warm this lady and her husband had been to him when he was just five years old or seven years old or something, and that she's died and left him everything. So he ends up moving in next door while the little girl where she's perpetually standing vigil at the window waiting for her sister to come home and she's taking care of the cat next door um, but she doesn't know the old lady's dead and the man has moved in and she's really upset who is this guy now I'm not sure that that all makes sense temporarily that enough time would have gone by after the lady died for the 
man to come out from Toronto and move in. I'm not sure about that timing, but uh, we'll go with it. And it's very early days. A lot of people have bailed on this. Nobody, I don't think I've seen, well, I've seen one or two glowing reviews, but most of the reviews have been negative. I'm quite captivated by the child narr narrator, and that's all I have to say so far. I think the writing is fine. And I have started this as, a, it's not a buddy read exactly, but kind of a pseudo buddy read with Cecilia, The Bridge of Beyond by Simone Schwartz-Bart, translated from the French by Barbara Bray. This is a Guadalupean novel, is that what we say? Guadalupean? And um, I love the first paragraph. I will say that I'm not loving the rest. I've read 40 pages. The rest of it is not gobsmackingly good like that opening paragraph was, but it's good. I'm enjoying it. It's setting up a whole bunch of background of the protagonist who is an old lady in that opening paragraph that I think I read to you last week um, and it's got kind of an epic sweep to it all set in the same little village on Guadalupe and very colorful characters very dramatic incidents but it does feel very much like the story is just being set up and I've just started part two which is called the story of my life so moving really into the meat of the story. I don't have much else to say about it. I'm feeling positive about it so far, and I'm going to probably finish it in the coming week so that Cecilia and I can have our Zoom chat and I can get it posted. It's definitely not going to be posted within uh, with Women in Translation Month because Women in Translation Month is almost over, but it will be hopefully early September, so I'll have more to say about it there. I have not commented on all of my secret reading projects, one of them is no longer secret. That is the chat with the Codex Cantina guys about that 1901 novel, The Man from Glengarry by Ralph Connor. That discussion is going to go live on their channel. It's not going to be on mine. I think the very last day of August. Well, I forgot to mention the one I wanted to make sure that you knew was still out there, and that is one other still secret project. I am editing the video now. It will definitely go up all things being equal, before you see me on my next Friday Reads. And the secret will no longer be secret. Stay tuned. And also that you have another three weeks or something to vote for which of the books on my bucket list I will be reading next year. And the results are quite interesting. There And still lots of time for upset victories, particularly, how should I put this coyly, from the Cana my Canadian viewership. So I'll put a link to that in the show notes, you've got until September 21st to vote. No, but I'll keep the results a secret until, until then, but just a reminder about that. That was for the Mooks and the Gripes bucket list book tag, which I launched about 10 days ago or something. A few people have done it, which is great. So I finished four, bailed on one, and this is the last week in which I'm going to allow myself to start one for every one I finish. So I'm going to be starting five books in the coming week. And then, starting in September, I'm going back to, for every two I finish, I get to start one. Because I'm at 27 books once I add these five that I'm going to start. And that's just too much. But I have stuff I want to get into the, get on my, get on my reading plate. That I want to start with, with all my booker and other commitments. So here they are. I'm going to start this short story collection to replace the Eudora Welty. And this is the Betty Howland one that's been reissued, Blue in Chicago. I think these stories were written in the 70s or something. I'm not sure. They were written a few decades ago. And it was Ronan Hessian that put them on my radar. I didn't know if I was going to get to them this year, but now there's suddenly a big space on my short story reading dance card. So I'm going to fill it with this. I can't wait to get started. These stories are supposed to be incredible. I'm starting what I hope will be the first successful completed buddy read with Kim of Middle of the Book March, and that is the Booker nominee A Passage North by Anouk Arud Pragasam. We're going to uh, have our first check-in September 8th or something, so I will be starting this on or about September 1st. This one has gotten pretty consistently good reviews. I really liked his debut novel, and I'm expecting good things. So you know from my shout out last week, from the clip I just showed you from my bite sized book chat number five, which just went up last night, that Lexa of Lexa Reads is starting a the second annual Kenyan readathon. And I can't believe that I managed to get the group read book, a paper copy, for sale by a marketplace seller here in Japan. 
The Other Woman by Grace Ogot, published in 1976, and it's a, the spine's in good shape, but otherwise it's kind of a beat up copy, but it was cheap, and I'm going to start reading this collection of short stories, my first anything by this author, in the coming week. And, just in under the wire, this will be the last book that I will be reading this year for Women in Translation Month, although I do tend to read quite a bit of books in translation by female authors year-round. Um, but this just came in the mail, I think, yesterday or the day before. A Cameroonian novelist, Leonora Miano's Season of the Shadow, translated from the French by Gila Walker. And this is a historical novel about slavery, so it's going to be tough going, I hope, I expect, and I hope I like it. And the last one I'll be starting is maybe the last chunks, chunky book I'm going to try to finish by the end of the year. This is for Invisible Cities. I think it's this month, this Palestine. And I've had this humongous novel sitting on my shelf, unread for five years, maybe. Elias Corey's Gate of the Sun, translated from the Arabic by Humphrey Davies. Look at that monster. It is almost 550 pages. And is a magnum opus of the 20th century history of the Palestinian family through the stories of two Palestinian refugees and probably their families. I would assume it's not just about them, it will be about their descendants or whatever. As per my new strengthened resolve, if I don't love this, if this drags for more than two pages, I'm going to bail. Same with all the books I'm going to be reading for the rest of the year. I want to increase my bailing rate tenfold. I have no more time this year for nonsense. If the book isn't excellent, I'm chucking it. Not to cast aspersions or a bunch of negative energy around this novel, which is a classic of Palestinian literature, but just for example, no more drudgery, no more trudging through bad books, life is too short. That's it, thanks for watching. Thank you.